The first thing I would like to go over in Logic Audio is what is called the transport and the LCD. The purpose of this video is to learn to navigate in Logic Audio. To hear what you want, when you want, is essential. The transport in Logic Audio works just the same as any DVD player, CD, iPod that you've ever used before. You hit play, and it plays. It hits stop, and it stops. Fast forward, and it fast forwards. Rewind, and it rewinds. You can always click with your mouse up here, but it's always better to learn the keyboard commands for efficiency. First, we'll start with the space bar. If you hit the space bar, it will start to play the track. If you hit the space bar again, it will stop. Hit the space bar, play. Hit the space bar again, stops. Next, we'll look at enter and zero on the numerical pad on the right side of your keyboard. If you hit enter, it starts the track. If you hit zero, it stops the track. To fast forward and rewind, you use the comma and the period on your keyboard. An easier way to remember this is the greater than and less than sign above the comma and the period, which point left and right. When you hit the period, it starts to move to the right one bar every time you click it. And when you hit the comma, it moves to the left one bar every time you click it. So let's use the period key and move to bar 21 and hit play. Now let's use the comma and go to bar 13. Another good key to know on your keyboard is return, which brings you back to the beginning of the track. Fast forward, return. Fast forward to 13, play, now to 18, hit return and back to the beginning of the track. To hear a specific amount of time, you can command click, which is also the same as apple click, and drag. I'm going to grab about two bars here, and then we'll hit play. And when it comes to the end, it stops. Let's say we wanted to listen to this section. I'm gonna command click and drag, hit play, and we can hear all the selection. I'm gonna stop this early. You can also drag left or right to move the playhead manually. You want to make sure you're below the numbers and above the tracks. There's a little space in this ruler right here. You can also just click anywhere you want within that little ruler and... Oops, the marquee is still clicked. All right, now it's following the click anywhere. Since the marquee was still selected, it was just playing that section. You can click anywhere to deselect the marquee. Now I'm going to go back up and click anywhere to show that again. A quick little distraction, but it's nice to see when something doesn't work, how to get out of it. Next, I want to look at the LCD section. These numbers tell you what bar, beat, and subbeat you are on. You can double click it. Let's say I wanted to go to bar 9, hit 9, and enter, then the playhead moves to bar 9. Let's say we wanted to start at bar 25. Double click, type 25, enter, play. Next to that is our beats per minute. The beats per minute tells us how fast our track is. Right now it's 124. If I change the track to 100, it'll slow the track way down, and you can hear that immediately. Now let's see what happens if we change the track to 160. We'll double click, hit 160, and enter. As you can tell, a lot faster. Let's bring it back to the original tempo of 124. Again, we just double clicked, type 124, and enter. Next to the tempo, we have the key signature of the track and also the time signature of the track. We'll get to those features later. Let's now turn our attention to the front of the LCD. This is where you change the features within the LCD. Right now we are on Beats and Project. Let's look at Beats and Time. 
You can see here we are with beats, and here is our time. Now let's look at beats. It's just beats. Now let's look at time. It's just time. Custom gives us a lot of features. It's a little too much for our needs right now, but we'll get into that later. Let's go back to beats and project. I would also like to look at cycle mode. Cycle mode allows you to set up a loop, setting up a playback of, let's say, two bars. You can hit play, and it'll keep playing this two-bar phrase forever until you hit stop. This is often used when you're first starting out a track and trying to find sounds or practicing a section that you can't play yet. The keyboard command to toggle back and forth between cycle is C. Sometimes when you're trying to move the playhead, you'll accidentally hit the cycle mode. To get out of that quickly, all you have to do is hit C. And if you see, it goes away. If you look to the right of the LCD, you can see that there's a toggle over here as well. This is one more way to turn the cycle mode on and off. The next thing I would like to look at is the master volume for Logic Audio. This volume only affects Logic. It doesn't affect the Mac at all. You can turn it up or down, and the other apps on Mac will still stay the same. If you wanted to listen to something in the background to see how it fits in the track, and you just want to turn Logic down but still hear the Mac, this is an ideal thing to use. Eventually, you want to have it as zero. But right now, that's a non-issue. And the last thing I would like to go over is how you can further customize the controls you see in this control bar. By right-clicking to the left of the volume control, you can get to the menu where you can change things in the transport, in the LCD, and in the modes and functions. We've only looked at cycle and modes and functions so far. We'll get to more later. In the LCD, we'll just stay with the four presets that we already have. Let's add a pause button to the transport section. Click the pause, hit OK, and now let's look at the transport section, and there is now a pause button. The advantage of a pause button gives you that it doesn't go back to the number you were last at. It just pauses in place, and you can pick up where you left off. And this is all I wanted to go over in this video.